Okay, welcome back. Let's get started with step two. Here, we the piece of geometry that we have left is to put in this arc, and let's get started with that. Remember, we're gonna put the circle out, quote, in the middle of nowhere, and we're going to use these geometric constraints to force the circle to go where we want it to. I'm gonna use the circle command. I click in my circle in place, sort of in the middle of nowhere. Finish the circle and type 19 to enter my radius. And there's the circle. Green check finishes the command, or I could hit escape. And now I'm ready to create some geometric constraints. Remember, I'm going to select this line, hover over the endpoint that the circle is supposed to pass through. I'm going to press Control and hold it, and then click on the orange endpoint. I can see here in the properties that I have a line and a point selected. I'm going to tell SolidWorks by clicking on this Fix Relation that I want to fix both of those pieces of geometry in space. And if you do that, look on your screen and you will see that you have two pretty little boat anchors show up on your screen. Clearly saying that we're going to fix those into position. So now I'm going to tell SolidWorks by selecting this circle, pressing and holding the control key and clicking on the line, that I want to create a relationship between that circle and the line. I can see that I have the arc selected and the line selected, and I want to force those two objects to be tangent. I'm going to click the tangent constraint, and you can see the circle jumps down to the line. I'm going to click my green check mark, and now I'm going to select the circle and then that line that we fixed in space. And I'm going to make sure I'm hovering over the endpoint so that I have both selected, and I'm going to tell SolidWorks to make those two features coincident by clicking the coincident relation. The circle jumps down to the endpoint of that line. I finish my command with a green check and I'm going to now use the trim command to finish up this outline. I want my power option and I'm going to left mouse button and pan across the outer portion, the extra portion of this line, the I'm gonna do a nice quick little circle around here to in essence delete all of those interior lines one option to do it. Finish my trim command, and I'm now going to put the circle in that represents the hole using the circle command. Hover over the origin, click my circle into place, click the outline, and enter 14 divided by 2 as the radius. SolidWorks does the math. The answer is 7, and I have a circle. I click the green check, and all of the 2D geometry is complete. I've completed my lines and arcs, and I'm now ready to exit my sketch. I do that by coming up to the upper left using the same icon command that I used to start a sketch. It now toggles to exit sketch. I'm going to click that. My model completely changes, and I see my 2D lines. I'm going to press and hold the mouse wheel and rotate my part a little bit, so I'm kind of looking at it in 3D. I come up and click the Features tab and use the first command called Extruded Boss Base. I click that command. My sketch now shows the yellow preview that what is going to happen when I finish the command. And notice right now it's 10 millimeters. When I enter 45 and press enter, my preview updates to that 45 millimeters. I can rotate, I can zoom out and in, and look at this part from every direction, decide if that's exactly what I want. If it is, I can click the green check mark. My part turns gray, telling me that that is the finished command. I want to highlight something. Here is this Boss Extrude Feature 1. If I click on it, notice my entire part highlights. This Boss Extrude feature is 
what drives the geometry on the screen. The mathematical relationship is hidden back here in properties. If I click this air expand or outline arrow, notice that sketch one is still there. It's just hidden under the feature. What SolidWorks is telling me is that sketch one is used to build Boss Extrude one. I could edit either one of those objects and change my geometry if I wanted to. So to finish this exercise, we need to put a fillet underneath and then three chamfers. So let's do that. Here in 3D, I'm going to use the fillet command. I click on fillet. I want to specify a five millimeter fillet. And now I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to choose the edge that I want to, that where the two surfaces meet. I'm not selecting surfaces or lines up here. I'm selecting the actual intersecting edge and SolidWorks gives me either a preview in yellow or not. It depends on what your, your SolidWorks defaults are. Sometimes, in fact most of the times, no preview is what the option default is. I want to come up and click this radio button called Full Preview and it gives me a chance to look at the geometry that I'm getting ready to put in before I hit the green check mark. That is what I'm looking for. Green check mark done. The chamfer command is hidden under the alternate arrow of fillet. So I click on the alternate arrow, choose the chamfer command, and I specify the size. And we want to create a five millimeter chamfer first and it's five millimeters by 45 degrees. I'm going to rotate my part, highlight the edge that I want to create the five millimeter chamfer on, and I see a preview. That's what I'm looking for. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to restart the chamfer command and chamfer the other two edges. I'm going to click chamfer, and this time I need to change my size to seven. I'll leave it at 45 degrees. And I'm gonna click this top edge. Again, the intersection of the two surfaces that I wanna chamfer. There's one. And it, notice in the same command, I can choose another edge. I can put multiple edges in the same fillet command. Notice on the left, I have edge one and edge two. Your edge numbers may be different what you see on your screen. I'm gonna click the green check mark and we have a finished cam rocket here in SolidWorks. I think that's it for this video. I will get these posted and again, love to hear your feedback.